Today I'm going to be sharing my watercolor project from the May Smart Art Box. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. If you are unfamiliar with what the Smart Art Box is, it is a monthly subscription box where every month you get a box full of full-size supplies sent to your house. You're not getting teeny tiny samples, which is cool because you can create lots of projects most of the time, depending on what that month's project is, with what comes in that box. One of my favorite parts about these boxes is that it comes with this really nice brochure that goes over everything from the history of that medium, you get project pointers, you have information on on all of the supplies in the box and then in the back you get a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to complete your own project. So if it's a medium you've never worked in or you're not familiar with, you're not going to feel totally lost. They are going to walk you through this. Smart Art Box has provided us with a code. It's below in the video description that will give you a discount off of your subscription for life. I also have all of the countries where this is available listed below in the video description as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at what came in this month's box. So as usual, the top of the box talks about how you can enter your project for a chance to win a free box. We've already gone over the brochure. We've got two paint brushes, a number three round creative mark brush, and a half inch wash brush. We have a pad of Do It on Yupo, a different way to watercolor, white watercolor paper. There are 10 sheets in here, which is a good thing because I have a feeling I'm going to ruin quite a few. We have a box of Lucas watercolor paints. This is a travel box. Oh, how cool, it's actually a palette on the top section of this. That's handy. And a cute teeny tiny palette that I am going to have to keep just because it's adorable. Watercolor, that is not one I've worked in in years. Let's go ahead and take a look at how I did with this project. So the first thing that I noticed with this paper is that it is super slippery. It was a little bit hard for me to figure out how to get the pigment dark enough. On regular watercolor paper, it's easier. And really, you just use a lot less water. It is non-absorbent. So that water, any water you use, just sits on top of the paper. So I found out pretty quickly that I needed to use way less water than normal. You can see I grabbed my mop brush a couple of times on here just because I had so many streaks and the mop brush happened to be sitting on my easel. So I'm now using a Q-tip to pull some of this off the paper this is one thing the anything you paint on this because it's non-absorbent it's not soaking into the paper so you can completely completely remove it i'm using a q-tip here you can use a paper towel and anything you really want adding water to it you can completely remove any of the watercolor paint off this paper it's very unique I did a test later on on another piece of paper where I painted something and then added water to the whole thing and it completely wiped off like white paper again it was similar to I mean a whiteboard it completely completely cleaned off which means you can pretty much practice for as long as you want without messing this paper up I'm sure it may hit a point where it doesn't take it well I don't know but I mean you can do this over and over again if you have a mistake it is not a big deal with this stuff which was really interesting that part, I can definitely see where there would be some great uses with this paper and this that technique. So I'm just loosely blocking everything in. You guys have to remember, I am not a watercolor artist. I'm absolutely terrible at controlling the medium anyway. So I'm drawing in my water here, just kind of separating my sand from the ocean itself. I'm keeping this very, very simple. It was a really good project for experimenting because it is so simple. So I'll draw in a couple of palm trees because why not? I started with the dark area first and then I'm going to come on top of this with the green paint. Get the little palm fronds in there. You can see you can get this paint really opaque, very, very dark if you don't use as much water. And that seemed to be the key with working on this paper is that you just didn't need as much water. Add in some shadows. And these were really quick projects, like 12 minutes each, just enough for me to kind of get a feel of the paper and a feel for this type of watercolor. I really liked the little watercolor travel kit. That is definitely something where I could see it would be convenient to take with you places. My failure of a shadow, that didn't end well at all. The nice thing is I could have just wiped that off and done the, the sand again. At this point, I didn't realize that that was so easy to do with this paper. 
So let's try another little ocean scene using way too much water. You can see how it's just running off of this. But again, I'm just experimenting. I want to see what happens if I put too much water and I make it run. You can see you can get some kind of cool effects that way. I'm using a hair dryer here to dry it off. Now notice that this paper does not warp at all. I thought that was impressive considering how much water I'm using. So when they say non-absorbent, they mean it. Adding my land masses. You can see I'm getting lighter and lighter for the ones that are farther away. And we'll throw in some water. Leaving a few bits of the white showing through. And then the sand. I'm just getting a base here. And you can see again that's running like crazy. For that sand, I'm mixing the darker yellow with magenta to get this nice light brown color. And I'm going to flick some of that watercolor paint with the brush to get more sand to make it actually have some texture. I'm using the dark brown there. Then I realized, you know what? I don't like this sky. Let's create clouds. So I'm taking the flat brush and I'm adding water and just lifting some of these areas off to create the look of clouds. You can see it really wipes off quite well. So I've got the wet sand here. And too much, so let's go ahead and dry that so it doesn't run all over the place. This I think would definitely be easier if you were working flat, being that the water does not want to absorb in. So here I'm taking a clean brush with some water and I'm wiping off some of the paint. Even though that's totally dry, it will lift completely. So you can get as many white highlights as you want. Normally, even with watercolor, even though it will lift some, you still, it can be hard to get your whites back very light. This will go completely white if you keep reworking that area with the wet paintbrush. We'll add a little bit more texture in there and onto the palm tree. This time I'm just going to do one palm tree. Doing it the same way, drawing out the center of my palm fronds and then I will mix the green paint. Sketch that in. You can see again it's very opaque, not using as much water. Didn't want that to run at all. And I think with a, a bigger set of brushes, this you can probably get a much smoother look than I was using or doing. I was getting a very streaky look, at least for the sky. Added some shadows in that palm tree. Added some shadows, and I'm going to come back through and add a few highlights and call this guy done. So the really interesting thing about this for me was the paper that it came with. This is that UFO paper. It is non-absorbent, very different. I have never worked on anything like this. It feels really smooth. It's a very thick paper. It didn't warp at all. I applied tons of water. You saw I was working upright and the water was just kind of running down. It didn't warp at all. I just was able to work straight out of the pad. So that was pretty cool. The other thing that I can definitely see would have a lot of uses with this is that you can add water and completely lift your watercolor off the page. So if you covered something that needs to be white later on, not a problem at all. That will completely come off. It creates certain challenges in doing that, but it also makes certain things like where I wanted to come through with the sea foam and the water. It made it so much easier than trying to leave the white of the paper showing through. So it was just a really interesting paper to work on. Definitely one I would say if you like watercolor, you may want to pick this paper up and just give it a try. It's not like working on regular watercolor paper. You definitely get some different effects out of it. And if you are interested in signing up for your own smart art box where you will get a box filled with different supplies each month sent straight to your house, I've got a link below in the video description along with that coupon code that will give you a discount on your subscription for life. Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs each weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Plus. all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys in a few days.